Hello, my name, my name is Keshwani. I don't know what just happened. My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 260. Please turn to it, page number 260, and today is our lesson number 70. I think there was a slight spike in the estrogen level, if you ask me, but only if you ask me. Number 26, on page number 260. This today is our last day. We'll finish the exam number one today, obviously. And then hopefully, we'll be able to begin exam number two soon. So very first problem on the page, page number 260. Number 26. X squared plus 3X minus 2 minus X squared minus 2x minus 5 and we simply have to simplify this expression that's all it is this says simplify the expression that is given above well notice that we have a minus sign here so when we open this parenthesis all of these signs will have to be changed just do it then this is going to stay the same x squared is just x squared plus 3x minus 2 and when we distribute this negative sign along all of this thing this is positive x squared negative times positive will become negative x squared this negative times negative will become positive 2x and this negative times negative again will become positive 5. That's the part you have to pay attention to this, because that's where most people mess up. They remember to change the sign of the first term but then they forget the other others. That's what we are done. So we have a positive x squared here, we see a negative x squared, they're going to kill each other. And then we have to combine the like terms 3x and a 2x that will give us 5x and then we have a negative 2 and a positive 5. A negative 2 and a positive 5 is positive 3. That's it, that's our answer. 5x plus 3 is the answer. Let's do the next one, number 27. Number 27. It says, which of the following decimal is the approximate value of square root of 27? Square root of 27 is approximately how much? That's what they're asking. And the answer choices that they give us are 2.56, 3.14, 4.2 and finally 5.2 well that's very important it's very important as to how the answer choices are laid out because that's going to determine how much work we put into it since the answer choices are laid out like this we realize that we are looking for square root of 27 and we know that the square root of 25 is exactly 5 square root of 25 is 5 therefore square root of 27 whatever it is the square root of 27 is going to be something a little bit more than 5. That's how we write it. It's equal to something a little bit more than 5. 5 with a plus sign means something a little bit more than 5. There's only one answer choice that's more than 5. And so we don't, we don't even have to go as far as something being a little bit more than 5. That's the only answer choice more than 5. The square root of 27, can, the square root of 27 cannot be less than 5. The answer is 5.2. Now what if they had asked, how would, we, how would we have written if they had asked us something like, Let's change the answer choices. Well, I can't change the answer choices because I don't do the exact answer. So let's forget the answer choices. We are done with this part. How would you write square root of, say, uh, 33? Well, we know square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So square root of 33, this is how we write it, is equal to something a little bit less than 6. That's how we write it. 6 with a minus sign on top. Why 6 with the minus sign on top? Because it's towards 6, not 5. Because the scale goes from the scale goes from 25 to 36. And 33 is closer to 30, 36. This the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 36 is 6. So the square root of 33 is going to be closer to 6 somewhere. Since it's closer to 6, we write that as 6 with the minus sign on top. This is just a slightly over 5. And of course we saw the answer. The answer was 5.2 approximately. 28. 28. Just give me one second. There we go. Number 28. They want us to arrange these numbers. 
from least to greatest. Arrange them in order. Arrange them in order from least to greatest. It's very important that we pay attention as to what order they want because sometimes they look for greatest to least. And the, and the numbers that they give us are negative 3, positive 4, 11 over 3, and finally 3.8. Well, we realize right away that since, since we are being asked to arrange them from the least to the greatest, and since negative 3 is the only negative number among the four, the negative 3 is going to stay here. This, this is the position negative 3 is going to occupy because it's the only negative number. Similarly, positive 4 is the largest one. How do we know positive 4 is the largest one? Because this is 11 over 3. 11 over 3, 12 over 3, 12 over 3 is equal to 4. Since 12 divided by 3 is 4, 11 divided by 3, whatever the hell it is, is more, le it's less than 4. This, this quantity is less than 4. I don't know what it is, but it's less than 4. And this is 4 and this is 3.8, which means largest is going to go here. The largest is going to go here. And if you look at the answer choices, and if you realize we're looking for negative 3 and positive 4 in these two positions, the answer choice is going to be either A or D. Now we have to work on these two. Now let's work on these two. Let's work on 11 over 3. Now we have to work on these two. Right here. 11 over 3, 11 over 3 can be written as 9 over 3 plus 2 over 3. 11 over 3 is same as 9 over 3 plus 2 over 3. 9 over 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 11 over 3 turns out is equal to 3 and 2 thirds. 3 and 2 thirds of course is 3.6 repeating, which of course is approximately 3.6. 6, 7. There you go, 3.67. So this quantity comes out to be 3.67. This quantity turns out to be 3.67. This is 3.8. I shouldn't have done all like this. I should have done it a little bit lower because now let's just do it here. So we have negative 3 as the lowest one. We had a positive 4 as the highest one. And then 3.8 is bigger than 3.67. So 3.8 is going to go here. And then 3.67 is right here. 3.67 which is 3 and 2 thirds. 3 and 2 thirds of course. 3 and 2 thirds is our 11 over 3. And that's it. So we need 11 over, 11 over 3 in the, in the second spot and looks like that the answer is D. Answer is D. Let's go on to the next one. That's post number 28. Number 28. And number 28. No, we just did 28. What the hell? We are in the penultimate question. 5.13. 5.13. Times 0 0.02. 0.02. Again, we keep it simple, multiply simply by 513 by 2, and we get a 6, a 2, and 5 times 2 is 10. So we get 10, 26, and now we worry about our decimal. Now we worry about our decimal. I'm going to erase this part and part is annoying. And that's very straightforward. What happens? 5.13, we have a two decimal places, 1 and 2. Here we have 0 0.023, we have 1 and 2 decimal places. So whatever our answer is, we have to move the decimal place to 4 spots. From here we start, we have to move it 4 spots. 1, 2, 3 and 4, it ends up here. So 5.13 times 0 0.06 turns out is equal to 0 0.1026. That's our answer, 0 0.1026. And what answer choice is that? That's the very first one. The answer is A. The very last one, number 30. Number 30. A little while ago, a few seconds ago, we described number 29. We 
we describe number 29 as the penultimate problem. It doesn't hurt to work on our vocabulary. We did learn it. We did learn the word penultimate long time ago in our vocabulary videos and I'm going to tell you exactly which day it was. But I know that we did learn it. I'm looking at my vocabulary list here. Oh, there we go. Day number 11. Just type in, just type in vocabulary words. Day 11 along with my name. Just type in Keshwani and then vocabulary words day 11 and you will find the video where we learned the word penultimate which is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. This was the penultimate problem. Let's do the ultimate one, the last one. Number 30. It says 7 8. 7 8 minus 5 12. Well, before we can do the subtraction, before we can subtract one fraction from the other, they have to have the same denominator, they have to have the common denominator. Can we find some number which can, which uh, a number that is the evenly divisible by 8 and 12? And that number, of course, is, you're right, 24. We can divide 24 evenly by 8 and we can divide 24 evenly by 12. So we have to convert this denominator into 24. And how do we do that? Well, we take that fraction and multiply top and bottom by 2. How do we convert this, this uh, denominator into 24? Well, 8, 3 is at 24, so we have to multiply, uh, we have to divide top and bottom by, or rather, we multiply, we multiply this fraction by 3 over 3. When we multiply this fraction by 3 over 3, we are essentially multiplying it by 1. We are not changing its value. Similarly here, we are multiplying this fraction by 2 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1. We are not changing its value. So that's it. So now we have a common denominator of 24 because 8 times 3 is uh, 3 eighths are 24. Here, eight, 3 times 8 is 24. 12 times 2 is 24. So on the top we get 3 times 7, which is 21, minus 5 times 2, which is 10. 21 minus 10 is going to be 11. So we end up with 11 over 24. 11 over 24. And that's it. That's our answer. 11 over 24. And that's answer choice B. Hopefully I will see you for exam number two. Uh, uh, but this is the end of the exam number one. Most likely I will actually finish since we have, since we have gone this far. Uh, I'll probably make 10 more videos to take care of exam number two. And that way we have covered, that, that way we, we will have covered all the, all, the, all the questions dealing with the math for the T's. We will have covered we will have covered a score that way we will have covered this marker is dying again I'm digressing big time in the English portion we will have covered this is called future future perfect tense future perfect not present not present perfect not past perfect future perfect we will have covered I'm going to do one more exam and that way we will have covered all the math problems in this book uh, uh, for the T's do you understand? as opposed to past perfect which, which would have been we had covered present perfect would be we have covered we had covered we have covered we had covered past perfect we have covered present perfect we will have covered future perfect. I'm into that. I'll see you in the next exam. Bye now.